when we look at Arizona's bioindustry, we see a broad spectrum of opportunities. Over the last two decades, Arizona has benefited from over $19 billion in investment from private industry, government, philanthropists, and individual investors, specifically designed to build Arizona's life science infrastructure and bring new cures and new treatments to the people that need them. The entrepreneurial spirit here in Arizona is strong, and the resources the state brings to startups like ours can help ensure our success. Here at Beacon, we've been able to tap into the resources and partnerships for the Center of Entrepreneurial Innovation to use their infrastructure and this lab space to develop and commercialize our tests for early colorectal cancer detection called B-Screen CRC. And today, we're saving lives. Arizona's healthcare leaders work with our bioscience innovators to create products that are safe, effective, and make life better for the people around us. Arizona is the place to be for health innovation that is making life better for patients and their families. Clinical and research partnerships span the state, including important work that is being done right here at the Honor Health Research Institute where we're proud to be the partner of choice for more than 200 sponsors and where patients from all 50 states and 29 countries have come here to demonstrate first in human responses to promising new therapies. Growing great bioscience companies requires great people. Talent is essential for success. Medtronic employs over 700 talented individuals at our site in Tempe where we are chartered with the development and manufacture of innovative, implantable medical devices. We have a long history that sprouted from the Arizona semiconductor industry and are proud to be part of the current medical device community. Our operation draws on Arizona's diverse talent base for those who can develop and deliver the ultra-low power microelectronic solutions that make a true difference in the lives of Medtronic patients worldwide. Arizonans have created world-class research institutes. Arizonans are pioneering in the fields of diagnostics, medical devices, and therapeutics. From our universities to our research institutes, our philanthropic organizations, and most importantly, our industry, people will work with you. They will find ways to collaborate, and they will help you succeed. As chairman of the Biosciences Roadmap Steering Committee, I'm proud to work with over 100 leaders from across the state, from research, academia, healthcare, government, and industry, who are committed to collaborations that make a real difference for patients in Arizona and across the world through breakthrough bioscience innovation. It starts with an idea. It may be in the lab, at a university, in a company, or just on a piece of paper. From that idea, we begin a journey from discovery to development to delivery, because as we deliver, we make life better for people here in Arizona and around the world. Good afternoon. And welcome to the 14th annual AZ Bio Awards and AZ Bio's 15th anniversary celebration. I'm Kristen Swingle, Chairwoman of AZ Bio and Chief Operating Officer of the Critical Path Institute. This is a special night for our community and especially for our honorees. It is our opportunity to celebrate what has been, where we are today, and most importantly, what is to come. When we talk about what is to come, um, it starts with our students. And in front of you are students from Arizona's high schools and universities. Governor Hall, these students are products of what you did 19 years ago. They are also our hope for the future. And so students, this is your cue on the count of three. One, two, three, take your bow. <laughs> yeah. 
After the award ceremony, the students will be back at your posters. If you want to feel encouraged for the future and amazed at how much they know that you don't, <laughs> go see them afterwards. Students, you may now be seated. Thank you. So at this point, I would like to um, recognize the leaders from the Arizona legislature who are here with us tonight. Again, without the support of our elected leaders, we cannot achieve what we need to achieve as a state, nor can our students have the opportunities for tomorrow that we enjoy today. Would members of the Arizona legislature please stand and be recognized? And we, uh, I would also ask the members of the AZ Bio Board of Directors who support our efforts throughout the year to please stand and be recognized. Go ahead. All right, and now I will ask everybody to stand um, and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. All right. So um, I also want to express our sincere appreciation to our AZ Bio supporters. Um, AZ Bio has, is now celebrating its 16th year. It emerged out of the clusters that Governor Hall championed. And to this day, it has repeated, it has steadily grown to, to, to right now, where there are 600 of you in the room. And Arizona's bioscience community, when you add up all of the employees of AZ Bio members, include over 300,000 employees in this state. That's pretty cool. I want to thank all of our AZ Bio supporters. Those are the people that provide us with resources so that we can do what we do from the student programs all the way up through working on important initiatives in Washington, D.C., working with our entrepreneurs, and especially on working on access to capital because that's one of the challenges that we haven't tackled yet, and we will talk about that later. Um, but part of being able to talk about access to capital is to spread the word of what's going on in Arizona, not just to the people here in the state, but to get that word out. And that takes partnerships. And I'd like to recognize the members of the Cavendish, Cavendish community. Tom, are you here? Stand up and be recognized. Tom McKenzie um, leads the Cavendish community. They are hosting a gathering of family offices, investors, and thought leaders from around the country at, on the Phoenix Biomedical Campus tomorrow as part of Arizona Bioscience Week. And they have been our partners working together now for almost five years. So I am deeply appreciative to Cavendish for all of your help in spreading the word about what's happening in Arizona, not just in our community, but coast to coast. Thank you. Okay, now we come to the fun part. Christina Corrieri, um, if you would please join us on stage, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you um, Christina Corrieri from the Arizona Governor's Office, um, who will help us start off with our first honoree. Thank you, Joan, and it is an honor to be here on behalf of Governor Ducey this evening. 
and to be a part of this wonderful opportunity to celebrate Arizona's bioscience sector. And the celebration couldn't come at a better time. Arizona is one of the fastest growing states in the country, and Maricopa County is the fastest grow growing county in the entire nation. Hundreds of new residents are moving to our state every single day. And what are they finding here? The best place in the country to pioneer new technologies world-class healthcare, and an unparalleled opportunity to live the American dream. Arizona's bioscience sector is one of the most exciting and rapidly growing sectors in our state. Consider this, more than 14,800 bioscience and healthcare establishments here in Arizona employ 338,000 people. We know that bioscience jobs grew by 58% in Arizona between 2002 and 2016. And from 2017 to 2018 alone, Arizona was ranked number two in the nation for job growth, bioscience, and healthcare industries. These incredible numbers and this growth here are something for everyone here and across our state to be proud of. To that end, I want to thank Joan Kerber Walker and everyone at the Arizona Bioscience Association for helping put Arizona on the map as an emerging leader in the bioscience sector. But more important than the numbers are the profound positive impacts that the bioscience and healthcare industry is having on the lives of everyday Arizonans. For patients, your hard work means faster, more accurate diagnosis and innovative treatments that were unthinkable just a few years ago. And no one can assign a value to the innovations that we've seen with medical devices that are helping people every day and saving lives. Arizona is proud to be growing the next generation of leaders in the bioscience program through our outstanding programs at all three of our state universities, including the number one most innovative university in the country five years running, Arizona State University. And our state continues to make waves at every level of the bioscience sector, from research and development to the delivery of products and services and world-class healthcare. Today, Banner Health is our state's largest non-governmental employer. Dignity Health, in partnership with the U of A Cancer Center and Barrows Neurological Institute, have become a pre premier destination for neurological surgery. Mayo Clinic's facilities for patient care and research continue to grow. Phoenix Children's Hospital remains recognized as one of the best children's hospitals in the country. Honor Health's Research Institute is recognized internationally for its cancer research. And Creighton University is bringing new science uh, campus to Midtown Phoenix to help meet our growing need for more healthcare professionals here in the state. And on top of that, we have innovative, country, uh, innovative companies like Medtronic, Dexcom, BD, o Othera, and others developing new tools and treatments to improve the lives of people all around the world. And they're doing it right here in Arizona. And as we look to what lies ahead for bioscience in Arizona, it's important for us to look, at the, look back and recognize the pioneers who laid the groundwork for the state that we have today. And that brings me to our next order of business. Uh, the 2019 Arizona Pioneer Award for Lifetime Achievement. I, Jane D. Hull, I, Jane D. Hull, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona, and the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and defend them, and defend them against all enemies foreign and domestic against all enemies foreign and domestic and that i will faithfully and impartially discharge and that i will faithfully and, and impartially partially discharge, discharge the duties of the office of governor the duties of the office of governor according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability so help me god so help me god congratulations well change is hard for a lot of people to take but the world goes on with change, and Arizona has learned to cope with the growth we've had over the last 100 years, 200 years. It's hard for me even to believe. You can't 
live in Arizona and have your eyes open and be looking at what's going on. We are a state that goes from very, very wealthy to very, very, very poor. And it seemed to me it was very important that we get these kids out of kindergarten and onto learning and onto active jobs. It was very obvious that in Arizona, education was not a high priority. It was, it's not a wealthy state, and it, it needed help. And therefore, we looked at what programs worked all over the country and tried our best to fit them into the map that is Arizona. We are a high-tech state. I can kind of looked at all the Motorola's and all of the high-tech people that were moving here, and it seemed to me that we needed to be actively recruiting it, not just standing around saying, oh, maybe that company will come here. So that's what, that's what we did. Plus the fact one of the top investors and, and people that were working towards TGEP was from Arizona. And so we pushed together. Um, we're no longer cotton, cattle, tourists. We're a big state, lots of high tech, lots of manufacturing. Therefore, we need to put our best foot forward. Today we're in the mountain home and I'm, I'm happy being up here because the weather is absolutely beautiful. But I'm generally a very happy person. I've got a great husband, I've got great children, I've got a lot of friends. I don't see getting up on the, quote, wrong side of the bed, like my mother used to say, and being angry at the world all day. You're the only one that's going to change that world. I just wanted to th say thank you to Joan and to everybody in the Arizona Bio group who are here tonight. Um, and my son, Michael, who's involved, and, and keeps telling me about all the great things you're doing and will keep doing. So Arizona needs people like you who have helped build it in the past and will continue to build it in the future. So thank you very much, and Joan, thank you. So again, Governor Hall, we are so deeply grateful to you for the legacy that you have left to us. And now as we um, move forward, um, there is another person that we will be recognized who has not only made a lasting legacy here in our state, but is um, responsible for changing the lives of patients around the world. Um, Lynn Hudson, would you please join me on stage? Thank you, Joan. It's a pleasure to introduce an honoree who has been instrumental in leading innovation in the bioscience industry, not only in Arizona, but around the globe. Innovation is key to accelerating the pace of change in today's global environment. Yet, leading strategic thinkers to pioneer innovations in collaborative research is never easy. For decades, our honoree has fostered environments in which innovation plays a central role. I've witnessed our honoree make the best use of existing and often untapped talent and develop the conditions that allow <coughs> dynamic networks to emerge and flourish. For her, it's about creating an innovation culture based on trust among colleagues where everyone understands that their ideas are valued, it's safe to express those ideas, and risks are borne collectively. The work and innovation that our honoree has led throughout her career has touched the lives of hundreds of her colleagues, the pharmaceutical world, and most importantly, the lives of countless patients. The Arizona Bioscience Leader of the Year Award recognizes outstanding leadership that contributed significantly to the development of the state's bio industry and the advancement of biosciences in Arizona. Please turn your attention to the screen to learn about this year's honoree.
The mission of Critical Path Institute is to serve as a catalyst to advance the development of medical innovation and regulatory science. We tackle the challenges in critical areas of regulatory science, the ones that are too big for any single institution to ever find a solution to. The collaborative framework that we use at Critical Path Institute enables us to get the scientific community to move forward towards a consensus opinion. The public-private partnership model that we use at, at CPATH is what enables the protection that all of the stakeholders are looking for to be comfortable working in that pre-competitive space. When teams are globally dispersed, we have to assure that we are accounting for the perspective of everyone that's participating in that collaboration. This is a spirit I've tried to instill in our staff and all of our multiple partners at CPATH. As I'm passing the baton to CPATH's next leader, I see some really exciting opportunities ahead. I am certain there are going to be continual disruptive technologies that are being put forth. Everyone is talking about artificial intelligence and machine learning, and how that can be applied in drug development is going to be an important question to answer. Wearable devices and other digital devices that monitor in the home are of interest in the pharmaceutical industry. We also are very active in the space of data aggregation and quantitative modeling solutions. So you'll be hearing a lot more from CPATH in the future. I believe entrepreneurship and innovation are alive and well in Arizona. We have benefited from a number of partnerships. The one I'll mention is with TGen. We have created a number of internships for undergraduates and graduate students. And very soon, we'll be launching new fellowship opportunities. We also have developed a regulatory science graduate certificate course with the University of Arizona. So you can see that CPATH is doing its part to make Arizona a leader in the world of regulatory science. Please welcome to the stage Martha Brumfield. So, Aunt Martha, um, normally you get to go to your seat and that's what your script said, but um, we have a really special friend who wasn't able to be here tonight and she has a message that she wants to share with you. So would you please turn your attention to the screen? Hi, I'm Janet Woodcock. I'm the director of the Center for Drug Evaluation of Research at uh, FDA, and I'm really delighted to be able to speak uh, at this event tonight. You know, I... Surprise. <laughs> now, for all of the other honorees that are sitting there saying, oh no, what is she gonna do from me to me? <laughs> You're safe, that was the only surprise for the honorees. That doesn't mean there couldn't be something else. All right, so now we're going to move on in our program. And um, I'd like to welcome to the stage Mike Casanova of CBR, um, who was the 2012 Arizona Bioscience Company of the Year. You may see there's a theme going here. All of our presenters are gonna be past winners. And Mike will introduce our next honoree. Mike. Well, good afternoon. Joan, first off, I want to say thank you very much for the privilege given to me to be presenting the 2019 AZ Bio Public Service Award. Public service is a service that, if appro appropriately administered and managed, can benefit the general public with profound impact for the greater good of the community being served. From education, safety, health care, environmental protection, and, and public health, to name only a few, we all benefit from these services and solutions where the fruits of many of the efforts by the companies in this very room contribute. For the public service leaders, and I know I speak for many, I want to offer my gratitude appreciation for your dedication, drive, and perseverance to bring solutions to the public. The AZ Bio Public Service Award recognizes the person in Arizona who is currently serving or has served in the past uh, in a public service capacity and demonstrated leadership 
that has contributed most significantly to the enhancement of, business cli of the business climate, climate for bioscience companies here in our state. Please direct your attention to the screen as we learn about this year's honoree. So I've lived in Arizona since I was in junior high school, and, and my rule of thumb is that you leave your community better than how you found it. When I went to the legislature, I was a young mom, and I could see that uh, many families were struggling with making certain that their children got what they needed. You know, the neat thing about the legislative process is you learn with every issue that you take on, and that's really reflective of my experience at the legislature, I worked a lot on prenatal care issues, on issues of health care and prevention. I worked on, as I said, early childhood issues, because these are the formative years. In 1989 and 90, there had been a terrible measles outbreak in the country. And I think the science community was really surprised by the fact that there was as much disease spread, because there was a vaccine, and that's when TAPI was created. I got involved in 1996, three years into the project. But then came the challenge of not only retraining physicians to make certain that when children came into their office, that somebody was looking to see if they were up to date on their shots. And then the technology side kicked in. Physicians said that they didn't have enough information to do a good job of keeping kids up to date. So Arizona decided to develop an immunization registry. I'm always excited to hear about new medical innovations. And I love the fact that there are new vaccines in development. And uh, to me, the opportunity to prevent disease is, is very, very important. And I want to see more development. I really have enjoyed the expansive development of our bioscience environment that have enhanced the health of our community. And the more you learn, the more you see where you can find a place to make a difference. Please welcome Debbie McCoon Davis. Thank you and congratulations, Debbie. And now, as we move to our next honoree, please join me in welcoming to the stage Dr. Andrew Lettuce of Pueblo Magnet High School. Andrew was the 2010 Bioscience Educator of the Year. So, hello. Um, so, during my time as a bioscience teacher at Pueblo High School in Tucson, I reflected on the meaning of the word educator. To enhance high school bioscience in Tucson, I worked with several award-winning uh, educators, including um, Barb Fransway, um, Drs. Jennifer Barton, Margaret Wilsh, Dr. Nadja Anderson, and I tried to think, what are the qualities that they had? What are the similar qualities? And I think many of you probably already know what I'm going to say. They're all leaders. They always encourage people to do their best. And one thing that I think is always overlooked, these are very kind people. Uh, as an educator, you must always have a vision of what you wish to accomplish and how to get there. Students and coworkers always need encouragement so that they can do their best to see that vision. However, without caring, People are reluctant to give their best in fear of making those mistakes. Today, it is my pleasure to introduce an educator who every day displays these traits of encouragement, leadership, and kindness. <sighs> the Michael A. 
Kucinovich Bioscience Educator of the Year Award recognizes the educator who, as a member of the faculty or administration of an educational institution, demonstrated the greatest leadership, creativity, and actions to inspire students and encourage them in the biosciences. Please direct your attention to the screen as we learn more about this year's honoree. Hi, I'm Dr. Marty Lindsay. I appreciate and am humbled by this honor of the Michael A. Kosanovich Bioscience Educator of the Year Award. I am grateful to the many people who wrote letters to nominate me. My family moved to Arizona to experience and live on the Navajo Nation because we are Baha'is and wanted to live our belief in the oneness of mankind. Starting with living and teaching on the Navajo Nation, I became concerned about environmental justice issues, including uranium mining, arsenic exposures that affect less advantaged people. I do this work because I love teenagers, science, and discovery. My first research project was in the fourth grade, and my first education program was in the eighth grade with my siblings and neighbors. I strongly believe in giving people opportunity to ask questions important to them and then to provide educational support meaningful to them in novel, evaluated ways, in plain language, no jargon. The Southwest Environmental Health Sciences Center and the Bio5 Institute have allowed us to develop collaborative environmental health literacy programs that impact Arizona youth and tribal communities. Our work begins with building community relationships to merge their desires with the objectives of Schweck and Bio5 and to plan and implement programs together as a team. We develop Keep Engaging Youth in Science, or KEYS, because the educational community in Tucson asks for laboratory experiences for high school students. The KEYS model includes multiple mentors, seminars, science literacy, and assignments that are scaffolded to help students produce research posters in a few weeks. The objectives are generating new research knowledge, new bioscience skills, and genuine self-confidence from the hard work of a research project. Over 500 young people now know what research is and its value to society. Many now are grad students, pharmacists, physicians, and PhDs. I appreciate the support of my husband, Mike, my daughter, Erica, and my son-in-law, Bobby, as I have traveled a long, winding road. I'm looking forward to retirement to Indian country. Thank you very much. Please join me in welcoming the Michael A. Kucinovich Bioscience Educator of the Year, Dr. Marty Lindsay. Thank you. And Marty, at Governor Hall's table, you see that very handsome gentleman with the silver hair sitting next to the governor? Yes. Did you know that he came to Arizona as a physician to practice medicine on the Navajo Nation? That's how the governor got to Arizona. So I hope you will go and visit with Dr. Hall when we're done with the program, because I'm sure the two of you have a lot to talk about. Thank Congratulations. You So to introduce our next award, um, I would like to welcome to the stage Mara Aspinall of Bluestone Ventures, who was our 2016 Arizona Bioscience Leader of the Year and serves as a member of the AZ Bio Board of Directors. Good evening. I have the privilege to present the award on research. When you talk about research, I would say it's too easy to say research is important in biosciences. Research is not just important. Research is everything. Research is the foundation for everything we do in the clinic. There is nothing without strong 
and well-documented research. And the best research is done by the best researchers. Those are the researchers who form their conclusions from intimate investigations of our most intractable health problems. It is the best researchers that look at every aspect of what they do, who inspire their teams and their colleagues. It is the best researchers who bring to us their intellect, their passion, and then their undying commitment. So it is with that backdrop that I have the privilege to introduce our 2019 Arizona Bioresearcher of the Year. This researcher is someone who has made the most significant contribution to the advancement of knowledge and the understanding of biological and chemical processes. That is measured by publications and most importantly, the acknowledgement of their peers in the field. So with that, let's meet our winner. The Arizona Biosciences Award, uh, which is going to be given this year to Monica Kraft, is extraordinarily deserved. She's incredibly warm and outgoing, an incredible scientist, but I think what really distinguishes her from others is her level of involvement in her science. I can't imagine anybody else who I would give it to. I came to the university for two main reasons. One is to lead the Department of Medicine, and a second to work with fantastic researchers in the Asthma and Airway Disease Research Center. I think we all know somebody with asthma, and many times it's, it's a mild situation. I take care of patients who have much more moderate to severe disease, and it really impacts their quality of life. I really enjoy helping patients really live lives to the fullest. One of my goals is to really advance therapeutics for these patients, but then also in a, in a precision-oriented way. She has not only done fabulous work in the area of basic sciences and basic mechanisms of disease in asthma, but she has also derived from that work potentially new therapies that I am quite convinced could be one day in the market and in improve the lives of millions of people who are affected by this terrible disease that makes it difficult for people to breathe. I think the future is very bright. I think um, certainly in my world of studying asthma and caring for patients with asthma, the immunology of the disease has exploded in the sense we have a much better understanding of what causes it, what causes asthma attacks, what affects patient symptoms, and there have been a number of new therapies and several others under development right now that really will allow patients to have an improved quality of life, hopefully not going to the hospital, not needing to go to urgent care or the emergency department. And those are big events in patients' lives. And so the fact that I can be involved in developing these therapeutics, working with patients to actually provide them and help them reach their potential is incredibly exciting and I feel honored to be in the field. So it is my honor to introduce Dr. Monica Kraft, 2019 Arizona Bioscience Researcher of the Year. the center stage. Congratulations. You're all set. So earlier I said that there would be no more surprises for the honorees. That doesn't mean there aren't any more surprises. Eric Miller of PADT, please stand up. Where are you? Eric Miller of PADT, please come to the stage. So, I stood on a stage actually in this very same room at the Phoenix Convention Center in 2007 to talk about what we then called an Arizona company to watch. Over the last 25 years, PADT has grown from a couple of engineers 
who left their jobs with an idea and today employs hundreds of employees, has helped our entrepreneurs, has worked studiously to build our angel investment community. And what many people don't know is they have also created the AZ Bio Award for us every year since 2012. And it has become an iconic symbol of Arizona's bioscience industry. So Eric, your employees and I conspired against <laughs> you. This is why I didn't know where the awards were. <laughs> And they made you a special <laughs> oh, 25th you. anniversary Easy Bio Award. <laughs> thank you thank for you everything that you and PADT do for the community. Thank Congratulations. You. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I, if I would have known, I would have hired you. That's okay. <laughs> Y'all don't know how hard it is, his employees work to make sure that he didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to move to the next part of the program. And this is one of my favorite parts because again, it looks not just to what we've been accomplishing, but to the exciting things that are happening in the future. And so um, I would like to welcome to the stage James, ba James Bates of Advinow Medical. James and his company was, were recognized as a fast lane company in 2018, and he is going to do the honors for our 2019 cohort. James? <laughs> Joan, thank you very much. I'm honored to have the opportunity to be able to present this award. You know, it, entrepreneurs many times have this enamored view of Google, Facebook founders, and we're going to go out, invent a company, change the world, become fabulously wealthy, and solve a problem all at the same time. Well, we see movies about it, we hear about it, we read about it. But what you don't really see is the hundreds of hours that are spent every week working tirelessly to make it work. What you don't see is the thousands and thousands of rejections that founders must go through before you see the yes. What you don't see is the pain and agony as you're running out of funding scraping every dollar that you can get to be able to make this company successful. As an outsider to the entrepreneur community for many, many years, I also had that enamored view of being an entrepreneur. Then I was masochistic enough to try it. I am honored to talk about the new Fast Lane awardees that are the select few that have not only survived, but are excelling in their vision to solve one of the world's most vexing issues of our time in healthcare. The AZ Bio Fastlane Award honors the select few companies that have achieved outstanding milestones in the past 18 months. Significant progress can be measured by clinical results, regulatory approvals, certifications, collaborations, funding awards, product launches, job growth, or product sales milestones. This category is open to all AZ Bio member companies, and nominations must reflect both the actions taken by Arizona-based employees and the results those actions created towards the milestones. Now, let me meet the first of our three Fast Lane honorees. The drug efficacy and its safety are the two major technical challenges that the drug developers are facing today. Our new SPRM 200 platform is transforming the early drug development research at pharmaceutical companies and the academic laboratories around the world. It enables fast and direct cellular measurement that was not possible before. 
Biosensing instrument provides the most advanced tool to characterize and validate the efficacy and potency of a drug molecules at cellular level. Through our technology, we empower the drug developer with more physiologically relevant information to accelerate their drug development. We enable fast direct measurement at single cell levels at earlier stage, which helps to reduce the overall cost and the shorten the development time. The SPRM200 is revolutionized the process that early drug discovery research is approached. It was very exciting for us to see big farmers like uh, Pfizer, Bristol-Myers, and Takeda start using our tool to explore their new frontiers. Through close collaboration with the Biodesign Institute and our key customers, we will continue to be the leader for characterizing drug efficacy and potency in the single cell analysis market to improve healthcare. Please welcome Dr. Jing to the stage. Please turn your attention to the screen to learn about our next AZ Biofast Lane honoree, GT Medical Technologies. So the purpose of GT Medical Technologies is simply to improve the lives of patients with brain tumors, and it stems from the desperation that our founders felt as five brain tumor specialists who saw that even with the greatest care of neurosurgeons and the best follow-up radiation therapy, those tumors come back in half the patients or more within one year. The issue with today's standard of care is that patients are getting a dose of radiation from external sources for up to six weeks of daily radiation. And a lot of healthy tissue has to be navigated through in order to get the radiation to residual tumor cells. Our targeted approach does not require that, so we're only affecting the targeted cells. And we're able to push the time out to an additional recurrence significantly compared to today's standard of care. So we're in what we call our limited market release. We were fortunate to get FDA clearance for our technology last July. It took us about six months to refine the manufacturing process and to make sure that we could validate and verify every lot of product produced and we're ramping up our commercial organization so that we can uh, have broad adoption of gametile. This is very meaningful work for all of us. So these patients face a terrible diagnosis and I think we offer hope for the future in allowing them to have months and months more of tumor-free existence. Please join me in welcoming Dr. David Brockman from GT Medical Technologies. Doctor, I know it's been a long road for you. Please take this and we'll put you in the middle because you're the most important person. Okay. There we go. You're all set. Thank you. Our third and final Fast Lane honoree is Oncomix Therapeutics. Any strong biotech company, especially one with a lofty goal like curing cancer, needs a very strong scientific background. When I first met Professor McFadden and learned more about the work he was doing with this myxoma virus, two things really struck me. One was just the depth of the work. This is 15 years of work, 30 peer-reviewed publications, and a whole lot of different tumor models showing that this virus will attack human cancer cells. But what was really compelling was that not only would it attack the cancer cells, but it would eradicate them. So when you look at these mice after the treatment's been applied, you don't see any residual tumor cells. 
Our mission is to take this oncolytic virus and turn it into a drug that can be administered in multiple cancer patients. That's a long time. That's maybe a six to eight year process. But you can break it up into three segments. The first segment is about two to three years, and that's where we have our $25 million of funding. The goal there is to get this ready for the clinic, to get it ready to go into people's, the first in human study. After that, there'll be a small study where we look at a lot of different cancers, and we're trying to figure out what is the right cancer type that we should attack first, and what's the right combination. As I said previously, this thing is very flexible. We can combine it with a lot of different things. So getting the right tumor type and the right combination would be the second step. And then third step is once we've dialed that in, then going big in a bigger trial, looking at that particular tumor type and that particular combination, whether that's immunotherapy or chemotherapy or a targeted agent and then ultimately getting FDA approval so that then it becomes a commercial drug. You know, one of the advantages of working here in Arizona is frankly the investment and the foresight that Arizona State University has in industry-oriented research. Another advantage right here in Phoenix is our partnership with Mayo Scottsdale. That's a world-class organization and Mayo and ASU already have a pre-existing partnership. That's a great platform for building a company. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Stephen Potts from Oncomix Therapeutics. Congratulations, Steve. Let's put you in the middle for the pictures. James did a great job, and I can't imagine that there's an entrepreneur in the room that does not agree with everything he said. I remember um, when I left to start my first company after having been in corporate America for two decades and always having a steady paycheck, that um, I asked our chairman of the board, who was my boss, you know, what are the lessons that I should take as I go out on my own? And his reply was, well, number one, never go public, because that's painful. <laughs> number two, set your expectations high and keep trying until you hit them. And number three was the CEO's job is to do what it takes, whether it is dealing in the boardroom or taking out the garbage if the janitation crew doesn't show up. And our entrepreneurs at every level have learned that lesson and are doing what it takes. Please give them all another big round of applause. Another sign that an ecosystem, especially a technology ecosystem, is maturing is when companies are founded, mature, succeed, and then the entrepreneur repeats and builds a new company in the community. That's how Boston was built. That's how San Diego was built. That's how the Silicon Valley was built. All three of, our, of the Fastlane Award winners that you've just met are past Fastlane Award winners. Dr. Jing was the um, Arizona Executive of the Year at our very first Arizona Bioscience Awards. Um, and he sold his company to Agilent Technologies. Matt Likens, who you saw in the video, was the CEO of Althera. And he is now building GT Medical Technologies. And Dr. Stephen Potts um, built Flagstaff, and by the way, started the company in Flagstaff, Arizona, um, built flagship biologics, um, has built, built it to a multi-state operation, and then sold it, um, went on to be an entrepreneur at several other companies, and just successfully closed a $25 million funding round, which was the largest funding round for an ASU spin-out ever. So that's maturity. As they say, we're growing up. All right, now the next thing I would like to do is introduce you to um, the 
I'm Gen Vice President and General Manager of our 2017 Bioscience Company of the Year. Um, and Patty O'Brien of BD Peripheral Intervention, would you please join me on the stage? Thank you, Patty. Okay. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, final award of the evening. Uh, I've got the privilege here of representing my company, Becton Dickinson, and of course, the honor of presenting uh, this year's Company of the Year award. For those of you who aren't familiar with BD, uh, we are the fifth largest med tech company in the world with over 65,000 employees in a little over 190 countries around the globe. And every day we're partnering with ins institutions, clinicians, patients, and adv advocacy groups in order to fulfill our stated mission of advancing the world of health. As Joan mentioned, the BD peripheral intervention business that I work for was fortunate to have won the Company of the Year Award in 2017. I can tell you that meant a great deal to us and it is something that we still talk about just about on a weekly basis. Our global business headquarters for the PI business is right here in Tempe and we've got a little over a thousand employees that work there. I can tell you all of them are very excited to be moving into a new building that we are uh, about to open in January right at uh, the Tempe Beach Park area, adjacent to the Tempe Town Lake and Tempe Center for the Arts. I think this really emphasizes our commitment not only to Arizona, but to enabling more jobs in med tech in, this, in the area, and also enabling our ability to help improve patient care. We're focused at PI on delivering innovation every day, and focused really in three different disease states, oncology, end-stage kidney disease, and peripheral arterial disease. Innovation is truly at the core of what we do every day, and we certainly very much appreciate what everyone in this room does and the fact that we all work in the most dynamic and consequential industry in the world. What we all do together and the products that we make are a vital part of the global healthcare industry, and we have the capability to change even more lives moving forward. Now, the Arizona Bioscience Company of the Year Award honors the for-profit bioscience company whose Arizona-based operations did the most to transform the world during the previous 12 months. So please watch the screen as we learn a little bit more about this year's honoree who is truly doing some amazing things. The focus at Regenesis is around the patient and we dedicate ourselves to individuals who frankly have come very close to giving up hope on their ability to overcome chronic, debilitating pain. Provant therapy is an FDA cleared device that is indicated for postoperative pain and edema. It's non-invasive, prescription only, and used primarily in the home. It's very easy to use, so most patients self-care. And on the horizon, we're very excited that we've been listening to our prescribers who've been using our device, frankly, off-label for an interesting disease state. So we've entered into a major trial on diabetic peripheral neuropathy and are very excited about presenting our results to the FDA in the coming months. We've really been passionate about our ability to affect literally thousands of patients that have suffered from chronic pain, that have been using some very uh, heavy narcotics with some very serious side effects. And we are able to reach out with a device that most of them have never heard of before, that's very unique, that is very easy to use, they can treat at home, and they're able to reduce pain and improve quality of life. Please join me in welcoming Scott Brooks of Regenesis Biomedical.
Vince Salsa said congratulations. They're all pretty amazing, aren't they? Governor Hull, did you ever imagine 20 years ago that it would come to this? No, I won't. But I was first. So for those of you that couldn't hear her, her answer was she didn't imagine, but she knew we, that we could. Is that a good way to paraphrase it? You know, our industry is in the news a lot today. Um, the conversation has shifted a bit. It used to be that the news was all about the next opportunity, the great innovation cure, the um, great science that is moving us forward. And right now the conversation has shifted. And it's shifted to some other things that are a little bit scary. As we look at um, you know, programs at the federal level for taxes, the medical device tax, um, if it's not suspended or repealed, we'll be back in January and we'll stifle innovation. We're trying to figure out how to pay for health care right now. Because the reality is that my generation, the baby boom generation, is coming into our peak spending years and because we now have so many wonderful things that we can do, we're all living longer. And the numbers are going to make it really hard for us to figure out not only how to help these people, but how to pay for it. And so that's not something that we're going to solve tonight. But it is something that we have to solve. And there are answers that we have to find. You heard about a pioneer this evening who was in a state that needed to find answers for education, and she built a coalition of people to figure it out. And they did. Here in Arizona, nationally, globally, we will have to figure those things out. But there are things that we also have to keep in mind. So some of you know that um, I lost my dad this year in April. And it was hard. I had never gone through the end of life process with anybody that close before. Or had to sit by a bedside and explain to the most important man for most of my life that I'm sorry, Daddy, I can't get you a total artificial heart because you have end-stage renal failure. And Daddy, I, I can't get you a kidney because you have heart disease, you don't qualify at your age. That was hard. But then my dad said something to me, and this is what I want to share with you, because if there's anything that helps us do what we do, it's this. My dad was 82 years old, and I was sitting by his bedside, and we were having the conversation about what we needed to do next, which at the time was turning off his defibrillator. My dad was the Medtronic people. My dad was a walking commercial for Medtronic. If you made it, he had it. But he said, I understand that this is the time. But what you have to understand is that I should have died when I was 52 years old. I should have died. My father had vascular disease that moved into coronary disease. Um, and he started getting interventions from our industry, including a quadruple bypass at the age of 52. But over the 30 good years that he had, because of the things that the people in this room do, the medical devices, the drugs, the excellent clinical care that is available, he saw his, all of his children grow up and graduate from college. He saw them all get married. 
he saw his grandchildren get married. And he met his great-grandchildren. He had 30 years because of what the people in this room and people like you around the country and around the world do. And as we continue to have this pricing discussion, the tax discussion, the balancing the budget discussion, which, okay, remember, I'm an economist. Those things are all important. But we should never lose sight of those years that we give to the people around us. And you notice I say people and not patients because Lewis Breton I know is in the audience somewhere. And when Lewis won his Fast Lane Award and then we were preparing later for their Company of the Year Award, he reminded me that not everyone has the luxury of being a patient. Not everyone has the luxury of the care that we have. But there are people in Arizona, around the United States, and around the world that need us and what you do. So when we get dressed up and we celebrate and we acknowledge the wonderful people in our community, what's really, really important is that we keep in mind that no matter how hard it is or how frustrating it is, that we have to set our sights high, that we have to figure out how to get to yes even when you get a thousand rejections. We have to build the relationships with investors not just in Arizona but around the world because people are waiting for us to find answers for them today. We live in an age of miracles. When you go into the other room, go visit Cure SMA. There's a disease, spinal muscular atrophy. I hope I said that right. And that disease, if a child is born with that, in a, in a severe case, it's unlikely they will see their second birthday. But several years ago, we came out with a disease to treat that, to slow the progression of that, that disease. And this year, the FDA approved the first gene therapy for a, for a neurological disease. And babies that are born with SMA can be treated with this gene therapy, and they are cured. It's not an extra 30 years. For these children, it's a whole lifetime. That is the age that we are now living in. That is the challenge that we all have. That is our opportunity to be pioneers and leave a lasting legacy. Now, enough of my bully pulpit. You give me the stage, you give me a microphone, you get what you get. But there are, and this time, you, I'm pretty good about not using the script, but I don't want to leave anybody out because this is my thank you list. So um, first of all, I want to recognize Amanda Melinda of CEI and the teams at the University of Arizona and, of course, our friends at the FDA for Martha's surprise video. Um, for all of the wonderful videos that they created tonight. Please give them a round of applause. Again, I want to thank our sponsors because let me tell you, um, events like this, programs like the um, discovery, Student Discovery Zone, which by the way, this year, we celebrated having the 900th student participate in the Student Discovery Zone. These people are amazing. Every year they get smarter, I get dumber. I don't know. 
Um, for our honorees, um, Mark Goldstein of the International Research Center is our official photographer, um, which he has done graciously for us since 2011. Thank you so much, Mark. And um, if you would like to have photos taken up on this stage with your team so that you can use this, this curtain as a backdrop, Mark is happy to do that. Just come on up afterwards. Um, all of the videos that you saw are now live at YouTube, AZBio1. So youtube.com slash azbio1. Those of you that know how to tweet, feel free to tweet them, Facebook them, whatever you want. They are now public information. Um, you will not find um, Director Woodcock's video there. Unfortunately, we cannot put that one up. Um, but all of the others are there live and available for you. Um, photos will be on facebook.com slash azbio this weekend. They may even pop up tonight, depending on how tired I am when I get home. And um, I want to thank all of my, our, our AZ Bio team. If I, I, I saw James up here a few minutes ago, but AZ Bio people, my wonderful Abigail and the team and our volunteers, Diane Price and Sarah Duncan and others. Um, if you see them, please thank them. They are amazing. Um, and now? I always put people on the spot. And the other thing that that um, boss of mine said is never take yourself too seriously. So as we prepare for the next decade, um, we have exciting things to look out towards. Governor Hall gave us an Education 2000 plan. Now we're moving into 2020. And as we do that, we need to address one of the issues that we have never been able to substantially address. And that is access to capital. Because with, now we are pumping new companies out of our universities. We are growing up to the stage where we can start to do even more amazing things. But we will not keep those companies here if we do not have the early stage capital to help them grow. So, In Arizona, white hats are the good guys. We are the ones that are working towards a better future. And in 2020, the White Hat Life Science Investor Conference will return to Arizona, um, where we will host investors from across the country, and if history holds, also investors from around the world. Um, to come to Arizona to see what we're doing. I know that my friends from Cavendish will help me bring all the Cavendish people back next year. Um, I know my friends from Life Science Nation are in the room and you're gonna help me get some of those investors here. And I'm gonna be bringing some of our best Arizona bioscience entrepreneurs to JP Morgan so they can help me reach out and get that information. So we get them here. Mark the date, the week of September 14th, 2020. Arizona Bioscience Week begins again. It will have, we will have a bigger AZ Bio Awards in this very room. But more importantly, we will be laying the foundation for the future, not just of Arizona, but for people around the world. So with that, let's get this party started. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much and good night. <laughs>